Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Let's jump right in and do some work. Today's topic is focus, laser focus, on what you can control. Focus on what you control. This is just another friendly reminder talking about something that you already know. And what you already know is you can't control everything. You cannot control everything like the weather, other people, how they think, how they act, how they feel, how they behave. You can influence it, but you can't control it. That's their decision. Although a lot of people like to give their power away and say it's all your fault because I'm like this X, Y, Z, right? But we're not here to play the victim. You're way past that. You've already ele elevated way beyond the victim mentality. That's why you're watching this video because we're about empowerment and moving forward. Although we honor and appreciate and do talk about the healing journey as that's an integral part of ascending and continuing to improve our lives. But I digress. So we'll start with a quote today. We'll start with a quote. We'll also end with the quote as we always do, but we'll start with the quote. And you've already heard this. Life is 90% what happens to you and 10% how you respond. And I would even go a little bit further and say, I mean, it's all how you respond because how you respond is your choice and that choice is what you are manifesting and co-creating in the moment going forward. I think it's much more. Life is not happening to us, it's happening for us. So it's never out of our control, it's always actually in our control and that part that we control is how we respond. That is our sense of, not even sense, that is our divine power, that is our power of creation, power of choice, because we're choosing in every moment. That is manifestation. That is us divinely co-creating with the universe, us choosing how we think, how we act, how we feel, how we behave, how we eat, if or not we exercise, who or not we engage in relationships, both platonic, romantic, business, and otherwise, whatever. It's all a choice. So it really is all in your power. It's not what happens to us. Whatever happens to us is just based off of your choices that you made in the past. You know, you gain that extra weight because of your choices of what you were eating in the past. You've lost that weight because of what you currently choose to eat. You're seeing progress with your body because of the current habits you're choosing and how you choose to think, feel, and act like that uh, and act in accordance with what your goals are. So you focus on what you can control because we can't control everything. As a matter of fact, we only truly have control over one thing, our thoughts, our feelings, our actions, our behaviors our perspectives, our belief system, who we engage in, it is all the choice. It actually is all in your power. So you can't control the outer circumstances, but we choose how we respond based on what I just said, how we think, how we act, how we behave, how we engage, how we choose to see the world in certain situations. It's all a choice. I wrote down first and foremost, and this would be something to check out if you have not, well, rip the, rip the page here. Um, Victor Frankl, Man's Search for Meaning, incredible book, uh, very famous. I highly recommend you read that book because that is all about what we're gonna talk about today. You focus on what you can control and in that book, it's the most extreme example and environment about what and how we can truly control our world. He couldn't control World War II and being put in a concentration camp, but he was able to control his thoughts, his perspectives, what he chose to believe and think. He chose to give himself hope. And if you're not familiar with the book, again, I highly recommend you read it or listen to an audiobook. You probably even, don't tell the internet I said this, you probably find a free PDF copy if you're a reader, or you can probably do a free audiobook on YouTube. Don't tell the internet I told you that, but you can probably find that book free. It's been around for a while. But the a bridged version of that story is Viktor Frankl was a psychologist during um, the, uh, the World War II and he uh, was Jewish and got put in a concentration camp. I don't know if it was, I can't remember if it was Auschwitz or the one that starts with the D, the Dow, uh, the Dow camp or whatever it is, the other really bad concentration camp. I think it was Auschwitz though, the most famous of the concentration camps. So anyways, he's a psychologist that was put in a concentration camp and got split with his wife and the way that he survived as he reflected once he survived that horrific time in his life was he chose to believe that there was hope at the end that he would reunite with his wife and that that hope 
and belief that he would reunite with his wife is part of what kept him going through all these atrocities. He also chose that in the midst of these most heinous, just atrocious circumstances that any human being, I can't even imagine what it was like to be in that situation. Gosh, I don't even want to, I don't even want to go there. But um, man, in these most um, incredible, dire, terrible circumstances, he chose to keep himself going by what he believed, by what he chose to have hope. He chose to see this perspective. He gave that situation meaning that empowered him instead of victimized him, which gosh, man, what a mind and a type of person you got to be to be able to transmute that energy and belief system into something positive. What a true alchemist, because that's what alchemy is. That's what healing is. It's crazy. So Victor Frankl, Man's Search for Meaning. That is a book where you'll really gain perspective, I believe, on how you can focus, how you can narrow your focus on what you can control and get a better understanding. So let's talk about what you can't control. What what can't we control? Like I said, we can't control the weather. Or maybe, shoot, I mean, right? With all the technology now, right? They're talking about creating clouds and making it rain and all that stuff. But you you know what I'm saying. We're not going to go there. I won't take it out of context, right? Can't control the weather. You can't control how other people, can't control other people. You can influence them. And unfortunately in society, in the world, uh, the level of consciousness we're currently at, although it's rapidly ascending and raising, there are still many that live in the primitive Piscean uh, age in which we have all come, in which these crystalline structures of institutions in society are like today, they like to play victim and say, oh, it's all because of everything outside of me. My life is like this because of my parents and how I grew up and that one time that kid picked on me and my boss and then, you know, my ex-girlfriend and my ex-boyfriend and then, you know, it was because of this, it was because of that, blaming everything other than themselves. And it's not about blame, it's about being responsible. So we focus on what we can control. So what we can't control is other people, certain situations throughout every single day, other uh, weather, things like this. We can't control these things. So what can we control? We can control, I've said it already, how we think, how we feel, how we act, how we respond to situations. We choose what we wanna create in our life, the paths we wanna choose, the relationships that we want to have the people that we engage with or don't engage with, we can control We can control our health, maybe not the outcome and some unfortunate events or some karma if you have some illnesses, but you can control your lifestyle, your factors to maximize the current situation if you have some autoimmune disorder. Now, I won't get too crazy on this, but I mean, if you start looking to Dr. Joe Dispenza's work, you actually can, you can understand that you're actually the one making yourself sick. And that's something that if you're interested and go, oh, that's a bunch of BS, Start looking into Dolores Cannon and Joe Dispenza, and you'll gain that greater consciousness and understanding of what it is. Some of it might be karmic, but I wanna stay on task here. So anyways, we can control certain things, but we can't control others. So what do we do? Well, every difficult situation, you get to ask yourself a couple of questions in order to gain your power back, your agency, because that's what it is. Focusing on what you can control, which is your choice, your power of choice. You always have a choice. You always have a choice. And again, Viktor Frankl, man, search for meaning. He didn't have a choice on being put in a concentration camp. He didn't have a choice on that, but he had a choice on how to view the situation. He had a choice on how he wanted to respond to the situation. That is the real power. That's what you always can control. It's your power of agency, your agency, your power of choice. Your choice on how you feel, your choice on how you think, your choice on how you act, your choice of your perspective on how you're viewing a situation. Pretty crazy when we start talking about it like this, you're like, crap, I actually do have a lot of power. You do, you've just been programmed to brainwash to think that you don't, but you absolutely do. Your world, your current reality, is based off of all your choices. It's based off of all your past choices. It's based off of your thoughts that you choose to think whether unconsciously or unconsciously. So if they're unconscious, you're choosing them on an unconscious level, even though it's not a conscious choice. If you get me there, you always have a choice. So every difficult situation, you get to ask yourself, number one, what is the lesson or are the lessons I am to learn from this particular situation, relationship, 
etc that I'm currently experiencing what are the lessons I need to learn that's very important because if you glean the insights and gain the lessons that is what growth is you have an opportunity to apply that learning into your life by not making the same choices or decisions that will lead to a different outcome so what are the lessons this is spirit we're in a freaking spiritual school that's what planet earth is we're here to learn lessons the quicker you can learn the lessons from the situations you heal that karma it gets passed on and now those situations no longer present themselves into your life because you've ascended you've healed your consciousness your awareness your energy your vibration has raised that's how we do that i think i need to do a video on vibration and frequency how to raise your energy what that means practices things like that so we'll make a note on that but the second question you need to ask yourself is okay this situation is out of my control but what can i control what can i control what can i change what can i do how do i need to look at this differently in order to create a positive situation and outcome for myself how can i transmute this situation how can i transmute this crappy situation this crappy environment this crappy relationship job etc fill in the blank how what can i control how can i focus on this or switch this in my life to create a positive outcome out of something negative that's alchemy that's healing that's what you're here to do so take the negative and transmute it into positive that's alchemy that's what we're doing that's manifestation that's power that's agency that's empowerment that's control of you that is controlling your world your responses your perspectives your thoughts your behaviors your actions see what i'm saying i say it over and over because repetition is how we learn so i'll say it over and over there was something I wanted to add on about what can I control? What can I change? What can I do? So examples of this, it's perspective. My life is the way it is because of X. Because my dad was abusive. Because my mother uh, left us. Because she was a drug addict. Because my um, cousin uh, committed suicide and whatever. My ex, because he cheated on me. My ex-wife because she left me for my best friend so that's why my life and my relationships are like that because of this as long as you live in that victim mentality you will never gain your power back and your choice of agency because you're using that story your past experience to keep you in a limited vibration to keep you in the same low frequency energy so it's all about shifting our thoughts, our behaviors, our beliefs, our perspectives, our actions in order again to transmute that negative experience and learn the lessons into a positive one. That's how we ascend. So here's some simple examples. So it's all about the stories we tell ourselves. So here's an example. What can I control? You can't control the world economy. Or maybe you can. Maybe you're one of the rare few in the Illuminati that's in power and you're watching my video right now and you are one of the five major families that run the entire banking system in the entire world like the Rothschilds and all these things maybe you are one of those people I doubt you're one of, you're one of those people and you're watching you're definitely not because this is about positivity and love high frequency and that is some evil crap anyways um so you can't control the economy you can't control the job market all these things so your belief might be Oh God, the economy's so terrible. The world's so terrible. I can't get a job because uh, Biden is president and Trump's going to be president. And so the world's so bad. So I just ha can't get a job because it's all their fault. How empowering is that? You're giving all your power away to a situation and something you cannot control. When in reality, if you look at the truth, that's a bunch of BS because in the, wor in the worst economy, in the crappiest situation, in the worst circumstances, there's still people getting jobs every day. There's still people making money. There's people that have two or three jobs in a crappy economy. There's people that get hired and offered multiple jobs in the worst of economical circumstances and environments in the crappiest stock market crash um, or depression that we're in or et cetera, whatever. All those external circumstances. You can't control that crap. So you can either tell yourself that story, I can't get a job because the economy is so bad and play victim and say it's all because of them. Or you can regain your sense of empowerment your choice of agency, your belief system and say, well, listen, the economy is bad, but there's people getting hired every day. So I know that I can get a hire, get hired because I'm intelligent and friendly. 
I have experience, and if I don't have experience, I'm willing to work hard and gain the experience and the insights. I'm willing to develop the skills and become an asset to whatever company or job or field it is that I desire because I know that I'm capable of that because I'm an intelligent, smart, powerful individual and I can learn any skill that I need to learn in order to be a valuable asset to a company that I enjoy and which I'm valued and respected and making more than enough money than I need. See how that works? It's two sides of the coin and it's your choice which you want. I can't get a job because of the economy or X, Y, and Z. Or, sure, I know that I can get a job because I am intelligent and capable of learning any skill or anything I need to learn in order to become a valuable asset and be hired above all the other competition. There is no competition for me. I got this, what do I gotta do first? Well. This is the field I wanna go into. So I have some experience, but I need to learn this. These are the people I'm competing with. So you just start focusing on what you need to do in order to make it happen rather than all the reasons that you can't. Two sides of the same coin, focusing on what you can control, which is your power, or becoming a victim, or choosing to be a victim, not even becoming a victim, because you're never becoming a victim, you're just simply choosing to come out of that situation. All perspectives, all stories we tell ourselves. I can never trust a man again because my last three uh, relationships, they all cheated on me and they were terrible men and all these things. You're right, sweetheart. You didn't deserve that. You did get played. You did get cheated on. You did get taken advantage of. But you know what? You know what you had a choice over? Choosing the men that you allowed into your life to be intimate with. You chose those men. So you've got to be responsible about who you choose, what you choose. You chose to allow those men into your life. You chose that. So you you can say, well, yeah, but he seems so blah, 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 blah. On the surface, it was so good. Okay, so what are the lessons you need to learn so you're not making the same mistakes in choosing the right person to be into your life, the right men? What's the belief system, the wound that you need to be, that you need to heal within yourself that keeps attracting these toxic relationships and men that are taking advantage and not appreciating you? What's that belief you have deep down? You had a father that abandoned you, so deep down you have a belief of you're not worthy of a man's love, so you only attract men that reinforce that belief that you're not worthy of love that keep you like that. Well, there you go. You got to choose that. I know that might hit home to a lot of uh, women out there I'm talking to. You might feel very triggered probably do if that was your situation it was completely hypothetical but it is a common situation and it's only triggering you because it's shining light on the darkness and forcing you to look at it and giving you the opportunity to be responsible so that you can transmute and transcend those beliefs to heal that family trauma on your feminine side of your family and overcome that in order to manifest, create, attract the partner you want and have the relationship you want, which you've got this amazingly sexy, powerful, confident, intelligent, wealthy, successful man who loves and appreciates you. It's possible, but what is your belief? Your belief is your choice. That's what you can control. You can't control how those toxic men are. They got their own crap going on, unhealed stuff. That's why they treat women like that but you can control yourself, your belief system, who you choose to allow in your life, your level of awareness and perspective, how you choose. So all men are crap because you had a bad bunch of relationships. That's a choice in your belief system. And as long as you believe that, well, you're a powerful woman. You're gonna make that come true every damn time. That's how we are. We're powerful co-creators. This is why raising the consciousness, the self-awareness, becoming aware of our thoughts, our beliefs, our actions, our behaviors, becoming empowered. This is why it's so important, it's so powerful. And it's right there for you. It's right there. It's right there for all of us. It's all about you. It's all about you. Your life is yours. It has nothing to do with anybody else. You're the one that created this life. All of your experiences are your experiences. They're your, this is your life, you chose all that. You chose all that on a conscious level. And if we're taking a higher perspective, which we will right now, you chose to have every experience in your life before you incarnated into this reality in this lifetime. And you knew what you were doing and you agreed to it because you said, this is what I want to experience in this lifetime. This is why I'm here on earth school. So you manifested 
all of these experiences, especially the unwanted ones, so that you could learn the powerful lessons from the pain that you experience in those situations. You know that, that's what we do, that's what we did. We all agreed, these soul contracts, we all signed it. Signed, sealed, delivered, we all did it, we all agreed to it. I agreed to all this stuff. I agreed to be adopted at birth from Korea and have my mom die of cancer uh, when I was six years old and watch her rot in front of me in my living room when I was a four or five year old child. I chose all that. I chose to have an emotionally unavailable father and family that all abandoned me and my sister. I chose to fight with her. I ch like, dude, I chose all that stuff. Oh my God. How could I choose that at four years old? I didn't choose it at four years old or two years old. I chose it as a soul before I incarnated in this life after healing and transmuting all of that pain into the power that I have now, man, there's the only way I could have so much of the wisdom and lessons I'm so grateful for that came from that pain. It's a lot of hard work, but it was a choice to look at it. It was a choice to heal it. It was a choice to improve my life. It was a choice to look deeper into myself and figure this out. Why do I sabotage every relationship I had? Oh, do you think it's because I felt like I wasn't worthy of a woman's love because maybe I was adopted and my mom died and I had an abusive sister and a wild family and not any positive female influences? Oh, I guess that would make sense as to why I always attract these toxic women who like just wanna take and take advantage of me and all this crap. Oh, there's a correlation there. But for a while, it was all them, right? Oh, it's because of this girl's like this and this. Well, I chose her, I chose them. That's when you gain the power back. That's when you heal. Because you can't change what you're not willing to be responsible for. And if you're not willing to be responsible for it, well, how the hell can you change it? You have no power over it. It's outside of you. It's because of them, them, them. Well, you can't control them. So you'll never have power over that situation or gain your power back. I'm here to help you gain your power back, to be empowered to create the life you want. That's what we're doing on this channel. That's what you're here for. It's hard ass work, man, but you chose this. You chose to be a light worker. You chose to be a healer. You chose to be an ascended soul to raise the consciousness. This is not for the freaking faint of heart, man. This is not for the, the meek, weak souls. This is the work, man. This is, we're carrying the, we're carrying the lot. We're carrying the freaking, the load, man, for the collective, for the people who are unasleep or, or who are asleep, who are unconscious right now. We're, we're creating that. We're doing that. You chose it, we're doing it, I know. I know, dude, trust me, I've thought about it a million times. I've sat back so many times like crying and freaking heartbroken or broke or whatever, and I'm like, why on earth would I choose this? Why would my soul ever choose this life? Why wouldn't I choose to be a professional athlete who like has an amazing family and super wealthy and admired and positive? Why would I have chose that? I don't know, I'll find out when I'm on the other side. No, I know, I know already now why I chose that because I like a challenge. <laughs> so do you. Oh, man. And the beauty is when we come out on the other side, God, how empowering it is when you find out who you truly are, when you remember who you truly are. Mark Twain, the most, I think it is, is it Mark Twain or Edgar Allan Poe? Not Edgar Allan Poe. I think it's Mark Twain. One of those two guys, two most important days of your life, the day you're born, the day you find out why the day you choose why but you find out because you're a light worker you're an ascended soul that's why you're here that's why you're on this channel you chose this man sis i know why right <laughs> especially if the situations are tough but again when you heal and transmute all this stuff you gain your power back oh my god i've never been in a flow like i'm in now and have an understanding like i have now and then here's the part about it though i don't know crap I'm not some swami in India or some freaking Buddhist Shaolin monk master sitting on, uh, you know, Mount Everest or in Tibet. Like, no, dude, I'm the regular. I'm some California bro that was adopted. So I'm like an Asian dude in a white guy's body who's like out here doing the thing who still, you know, about to go to the gym. Like, I'm just a normal dude, but I'm doing the work. That's the thing is everyone has the potential. It's just a matter of if you're doing the work. So you focus on what you can control. You can control your healing. You can control how you view things, your thoughts, your behaviors, your actions. You can choose, uh, you get taken advantage of at work. You can choose to say, oh, she's a blah, 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 or he's a blah, 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 it's all his fault. Or you can say, okay, what can I control? 
well, this is a sign from the universe that I got and taken advantage of my job. They don't appreciate me here. So maybe this is a sign from the universe that I'm not supposed to work here, that I'm not supposed to be around those people. The only reason you experience things in your life that you don't want to experience is to clarify what you do because by experiencing what you don't want, oh, just look to the opposite side. It very shows you, it clearly shows you what you do want because you're experiencing what you don't. So what are you focusing on? If you're getting more of what you don't want, then you're clearly continuing to focus on what you don't want. So just start focusing on what you do want. You change your thoughts and your beliefs, your perspective. You don't think it's possible? Well, that's a limiting belief. So you work on changing your belief about that, that it is possible. That is your choice. That's your power. That's what we're talking about, what you can control. So it's all about you, your thoughts, beliefs, feelings, your mindset, your attitude, your perspective, your actions, your behaviors. This is control. Self-awareness is the key. We are the meaning makers. You're the one that's making the meaning out of everything. And that's a choice on what you choose to make meaning out of. For instance, and I always use this example, you're like driving and you get cut off and you go, oh my God, that guy's an idiot. He's the worst driver. Arr, arr. So that's the meaning you're giving. And that person's a terrible person. They're stupid and a bad driver. But if we look at it from a higher perspective, did you know that that guy that just cut you off just got a call from the hospital because his wife is going into labor? Did you know that that guy's... Uh, or that mother that just cut you off and ran the red light, did you know that her daughter just got in a serious car accident and is on the side of the road and got a call from the police? That would change your perspective. Did you ever think of that? We choose the meaning that we make out of every situation. Pretty crazy, right? I always, I always think of that example. And I always do my best to be like, all right, you don't know this person and you can't control them. So there's a million things that could happen. All I can choose to is how I want to respond. Am I gonna go fisticuffs and pull this guy out of his car and beat his ass? That'd be a choice. I could, what good would that do? Or could I choose to gain an understanding, give him the benefit of the doubt and say, this guy's probably a good guy, or maybe he isn't, I don't know. But like, am I sitting here and taking it personal and say, oh, he did that because he doesn't like me? Guy doesn't even know me, never met me. We're in two different cars, he just cut me off. He doesn't care, He's in, we'll never meet. So why am I taking it personal? He's not doing it to spite me. He's got something going on. He's not in a good place. I don't know. Does it make it right? No. But if we can gain the understanding, you know, and then there's that, there's a level to it of like, okay, let me, you know, what, how do I want to navigate this situation? I know this stuff goes deep and I'm going on and on, but we're just about done. Self-awareness is the key. We are the meaning makers. We make the meaning out of every situation. In each moment, we have a choice. The choice in how we think, feel, act, behave. I've said it a million times. So become aware and conscious of yourself. What are your own thoughts? What are your beliefs? What are your perspectives? What are your behaviors, your actions? And are they moving you forward or moving you backwards? Are they moving you towards what you want or farther away? That's the very simple compass, north and south. Is it moving you towards what you want? Then you probably shouldn't think that. Or is it moving you towards or away from what you want? Well, that's probably the wrong thing to think. Is this belief I have moving me towards the life I want? No, well then change that belief. All beliefs are, are thoughts that have been thought over and over to where they've gotten so deep into your psyche, into your being, your mind, body, and soul that you just need to reprogram them. So you start thinking different things. Think it over and over and over. Eventually, as you think it over and over and over, you're drilling down deeper into your being and it replaces that negative belief. I can, all these downloads, man, I need to make like an exercise or like a workbook on like reprogramming your beliefs with meditations and things that I think will really help uh, all of us, you and you and me both, all of us. So maybe that's what I should do. Anyways, your choice is your power. Always ask yourself, what would the best version of me do in this situation? So in every difficult situation especially, but do it in the good ones too. I mean, if the good ones is, you're probably already doing it because that's why it's so good. But in the difficult situations or when you're really frustrated or angry or pissed off, sad, etc., fill in the blank, negative energy, that's okay. You're a human being. You're supposed to experience that stuff. Just ask yourself, what would the best version of me doing? The wealthiest, happiest, sexiest, fittest, smartest, most intelligent, engaging, connected, loving, vulnerable, etc. What would that version of me do? How would he or she think and feel and act in this situation? How does he or she see this situation? You take a higher perspective. When you literally put yourself in that frame of mind, you're literally becoming your higher self right there. It's beautiful. I will leave you today with this quote, which you've heard before. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change 
the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. You can't control everything. So focus on what you can control. And what did we say a million times during this video? The things you can control are your thoughts, are your beliefs, are your perspectives, how you're viewing things, your actions. You can control your choices, what you put into your body, who you allow into your life, how you allow yourself to be treated, how you treat others. These are all choices. In every moment you have a choice and that choice that you make in every situation, every second of the day, that is your power. You have a choice. You may not have a choice on how other people behave, respond, things happening around you, but you can control yourself. So you only ever need to focus on your thoughts, your response, your beliefs, your actions, your behaviors. That's what I got for you today. A little bit long today, but uh, I just was going. Love you guys so much. About to get this pump in, and I will see you for another video. Love y'all. Later. Peace.